Welcome back. In our last lesson, we started learning about JavaScript arrays. And in this lesson, we're going to pick up right where we left off and start learning about array methods. So to get started, if you can go ahead and go into your project folder, if you can go ahead and go into the 18 array methods folder, and then the start subfolder, go ahead and open up main.js. Then in your browser, if you can go ahead and open up the index.html page, you should see array methods on the page. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and create two different arrays. Uh, first, we're going to do const, and we'll do r, and we'll go ahead and do array1, and we'll go ahead and do set it equal to our open and closing brackets. Let's go ahead and copy this line here and paste it here, and we'll change this variable name to array2. Uh, so in our first array, uh, let's go ahead and add the number 1, number 2, and the number 3. And then in our second array, let's go ahead and add some string values. Uh, so we'll do high and we'll do by. Uh, so the first few methods I want to take a look at are methods that can be used to convert an array uh, to a string. Uh, so our first method is the toString method. And what this method will do is it's going to take our entire array and each of its values, and it's going to go ahead and convert into a string with commas. Uh, so to see an example, let's go ahead and do console.log, and we'll do array one dot two string. And we don't pass any arguments, and let's go ahead and save and refresh our page. And you'll see right away we get a uh, string logged to our console. And we see the three values that we had separated by commas. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy this line here. And we'll also do that with array2. Uh, so let's go ahead and save and refresh. And so now you see we have high followed by by. So our next method, uh, join, is very similar to just string, except what this method does is you can specify the separator that you want to use for your string. Uh, so instead of separating by commas, we can specify anything that we would like. Uh, so to see this, let's go and copy these two lines here. Let's go ahead and change this to join. And then what we can do is we can specify uh, how we want those to be separated. Uh, so this will be a string as an argument, and in this case I'm going to go ahead and do exclamation point, and then down here I'm just going to go ahead and do a space. So if we go ahead and save and refresh our page, we should see our two new strings. As you'll see in our first example, our comma is replaced with exclamation points, and our second example is replaced by a space. So in our last lesson, we saw how we could add new elements to our array by using the push method. Uh, but one thing that's unique about the push method is this method is going to return a number, and this return value is the new length of our array. Uh, so as an example, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do const, I'm going to do len, I'm going to set equal to array 1 dot push, and I'm going to go ahead and push the number 4 to my array, and then what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and council log my array 1, so we can take a look at the elements after we do this. And then let's go ahead and do console.log our length value. So if we go ahead and save and refresh, you'll see our length variable is set to the number 4 because that's how many elements are now in our array. And we'll see that our item was added to our array. Uh, so in addition to adding elements to our array, we can go ahead and remove elements from our array by using the pop method. And what the pop method will do is it's going to go ahead and remove the last element from our array. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this. Let's bring it down below our push. And let's go ahead and change our length to a let. So that way we can reassign a value to this variable. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do length is equal to array 1 dot pop. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and cancel all these two items here. Uh, so we're going to save and refresh. We're going to see the number four logged to our council, and then our array now has three elements with our original three numbers. So what happened here is when you use the pop method, the method is going to go ahead and return the value that was removed from the array. So that's why we have the number four here. Uh, so our next two methods are going to be very similar to push and pop, except they work a little bit differently. Uh, so our first method is shift. And what this method does is it removes the first element of our array and shifts all the elements to a lower index. Um, so instead of removing the last element, this will remove the first. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll do console.log array1 and we'll go ahead and do shift 
And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and count to log our array after we call the shift method. So if we go ahead and save and refresh, you'll see right away that the value that's returned from our shift method is the element that was removed from our array, so the number one, and then our array only has those two values left. And you see they were shifted down instead of leaving a hole in our array. And unshift is similar to push, except instead of pushing elements to the end of the array, unshift will push it to the beginning of the array and then shift everything over to make room for this element. Uh, so what we'll do is we're just going to go ahead and copy this two lines of code here. And we'll go ahead and do unshift. And we'll go ahead and put our number one back into our array. And now if we save and refresh, you'll see that this method returns the number of elements in our array, so three. And now we have our full three elements back in our array. So there is one other way that you can remove elements from your array, and that's by using the delete keyword in JavaScript. However, this can lead to some unintended consequences uh, with your array. So it's not recommended that you do this, but I do want you to make you aware that you can use this method. It's just recommended that you don't. Uh, so for example, if we do delete, so this is our keyword, and then we do our array. So I'm going to do array1, and then we specify the index that we want to do, have deleted. And then what I'll do is I'm going to do a council log of array1 after this happens. Uh, so you'll see that we have empty in our array, and we have a length of three, but we only really have two elements in our array. So this can lead to some issues uh, with your code when you're trying to access elements in the array and process them. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and comment out these two lines of code here. 